Hello. Today we have a, um, well, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I think I'm most excited about this, but we have an incredible opportunity to talk to Sade. Hello, Sade. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so I got to, I got to tell you, um, I've been working in mental health for years and I've practiced as a therapist and borderline personality disorder is the one thing that we do not see people get better with. We just mm -hmm. don't. Um, mm -hmm. Medication doesn't work. Therapies don't work. Um, they're just that thorn in your side <laughs> client or patient that you just, you just try and make things as soft and nice for them as possible, because it's going to be a life of misery and there is no hope. Yeah, And that, that was my experience with borderline personality disorder, but you have a different story. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, when, when I was dealing with therapists myself, they would try to get me to come to therapy it would work out for a few days, maybe a few weeks, and then I'd stop going. So I get why it's so difficult for therapists because they'll try to give you something. They'll give me the medication or they'll give me uh, a day and a week, a day in the week to go and, you know, have therapy. But and then I won't turn up because I'm, out, I'm elsewhere doing something reckless. And then I'll come back in a month later. I'm like, well, I need, I need that therapy again. And it's not just so easy to just put somebody in therapy. It's a process that takes weeks and weeks. So as uh, being diagnosed with borderline, we're constantly fucking things up for ourselves. We're constantly messing things up for ourselves. And, you know, as soon as there's a, a solution there, we mess it up. Because uh, a lot of the time I saw a meme on Instagram. It said, it's like having borderline personal personality disorder is like having uh, bipolar express. So it's like bipolar, but really quick bipolar. So it's like, you know, bipolar, you can go a few weeks or a few months being manic, and then you can go a few weeks or months being depressed. With BPD, we could wake up really, really manic. And then by 30 minutes later, it's like, well, I want, I want to go and cry and die now, and I'm just going to go and kill myself. So it's all day, up and down all day, little triggers, something on the TV can trigger you, your husband can trigger you, your kid can trigger you. And I was just constantly being triggered. My emotions were constantly up and down. I couldn't control any of it. And when I'm, when I'm sitting back and reflecting on my decisions and reflecting on my attitude, I'm like, well, what? there was no need for that. And it's just very hard to be aware of what you're doing and not be able to stop it. So yeah, dealing with therapists was ne never helped. Dealing, um, doing therapy never helped. Um, we had group therapy session one time. I broke down in the middle of the group therapy session. It was just insane. And I, I get why a lot, there is a lot of stigma on BPD. Um, I'm just hearing about the court case with um, Johnny Depp and his ex-wife about she's just been um, diagnosed with borderline. And that is going to bring a whole nother kind of stigma to how, you know, the illness itself. But yeah, it's, a, it's really hard to deal with. And um, to know that food was the culprit is just insane because all of the medication, all of the therapy, it could have, I could have been saved 10 years ago with just eating meat, no sugar, no carbs, no vegetables, no fruits, just meat. And I could have lived a productive life. I could be a lot further than I am now, but I guess everything in its time. So. Yeah. And it, it is, it, it was all meant to be. Um, it was all meant to be. And, and I, I, I did, I look back on my mental illness and I was, you know, mad at first that like, you know, screw you society. Like you've been judging me because I couldn't be living your little Pinterest lives. And you had a full tank. I didn't, you know, I didn't even realize what, how, how good, good felt until I felt it. And I think that was the hardest part of, of watching because I was suffering with my bipolar disorder, but I was watching my clients with borderline personality disorder suffer immensely more because they are their own worst enemy. And it is just this, this hell, this like purgatory of just constantly torturing and constantly feeling like everybody hates me. Everybody is out to get me. Um, the world hates me, but, um, what I think is so cool about your story is that 
you did, you just jumped. You just jumped. You were just like, okay, I'm going to try this. And you didn't have any promise that this was going to be just like all the other things. This was going to be just like the medication, just like the yoga, just like the therapy, just like everything else. Um, but you gambled and yeah. you won. Yeah, I had nothing to lose. Uh, my marriage was, we were a couple of days away from, well, I was a couple of days away from saying, you know what, okay, I'm done because um, I couldn't handle being around him anymore because he is my biggest trigger, my husband. So I was going constantly from hating him every day or every hour to loving him, to hating him and loving him again. And him being my trigger, uh, when I'm on my own, I don't get as triggered. I can just live my manic life. I can go and do what I want. I don't really have any responsibilities. I don't have a child to take care of. But with him and the responsibilities in my life, they were triggering me to a point where I just couldn't handle it anymore. And I said, you know what? I might have to sacrifice time with my child and because my husband is from New York and I'm from London. So my plan was, you know, we split up, I go back to London, he goes back to New York and then what happens to the child? That is just a, a little peek into my thinking when I'm going through a borderline yeah. episode. And now I'm out of it. I'm, I'm not in that anymore. I, if I would have made that decision then and I didn't start carnival, we would be separated, we would be divorced, the child would be suffering all because of a decision that I made when I was in the middle of an episode. So that's just one example of how messed up Borderline had me. And with going carnivore, it was like, okay, this is my last try. And I even, me and my husband had a conversation because he had agreed. He was like, okay, um, I don't think I deserve this anymore. I think that I need to find somebody for me that can, you know, provide for me what it is that I need in my life. And it's obviously, if you, you're not able to do that, then we have to separate our uh, go separate ways and I said to him um before we I I sort of started seeing the effects of carnivore I was like okay before we do this before we split up before we you know put a child in the middle of this destruction maybe I should try ayahuasca because it was it was between the carnivore and the ayahuasca I was like okay LSD didn't work the mushrooms didn't work all of that the psychedelics I was like maybe ayahuasca is the answer maybe going and having a shamanic journey with the, with the mother plant with the ayahuasca would help and then um a couple of days after that three or four days after that because I had just started carnival when I was talking about the ayahuasca and three days in it was like I just I was I was watching Netflix and I was sitting down on the chair on the sofa and I looked around me and everything just felt really different mm. every everything felt quiet there was no chatter going on up here. I didn't feel any hatred in my heart. I wasn't bitter. I had no emotions pulling me left, right, and center. It was. It just felt very clear. And I and I I looked around for a minute. I was like, Is this Nirvana? Is this, <laughs> is this what they talk about? The uh, you know, the spiritual gurus when you get to that place of peace and Zen. I was like, Wait, I'm, I finally I'm here because I'm such a spiritual person. I thought this was something was spiritual was happening to me. I was like, Oh, maybe this is the rapture. Maybe I'm like ascending or something oh I love it I love it I just, I, it was just that my mind was so clear and it was in that moment when I was sitting watching Netflix that I realized there were no over I wasn't overthinking I wasn't having any catastroph catastrophizing thoughts I wasn't thinking about what it is that I'm supposed to be doing and what it is that I'm not doing there was no anxiety there was no depression it was just like I was clear and that was three days into carnival um three days of eating at that point I was just eating eggs and bacon um and I was uh, eating a lot of ground beef with um, prawns, with shrimp, sorry. And then, yeah, three days in, I'm looking around thinking I've reached Nirvana. And then I was like, okay, this might just be a really manic disassociation. So let me wait until tomorrow. And then the next day came and I woke up feeling happy. I woke up feeling clear minded. I looked at my husband. And I was like, wow, I actually love him. I don't feel any animosity. I don't, the, it, it's like all of the judgments and all of the criticisms and all of the bitterness and the anger and everything that was a part of me was just gone. And I, the only way I could explain it was like, there was a demon yeah. attached to me. And then the demon just left. It's like, I got delivered and the demon left. And now I was free to just be this person that I am. And then a week in, my anxiety totally went, um, realizing that I'm this person that just loves people, loves to talk, loves to socialize, loves to do all of these things that I've hidden myself from for so many years. 
And it, it was just such an amazing feeling. And every single day I'm waking up and I'm, I'm continuously monitoring myself like, okay, maybe today's the day that my, uh, maybe the, uh, I've been saying, maybe the borderline just turned into bipolar. Maybe I've got a couple of months of feeling good and then I'm gonna, you know, just go to shit, but nothing. So after the first three days, I saw the benefits. And after a week, I saw the anxiety go. And then two weeks, I'm just seeing the borderline symptoms disappear. No more splitting, no more arguing with my partner, no more seeing him as the enemy, as the, the person keeping me trapped in this prison. None of it. It's just all gone. And, and now it, your cravings are gone. All cravings are gone as well. Yeah. Everything yeah. And you just... said that took about 60 days. Well, you yeah. noticed at 60 days. The craving stopped at around four weeks. The craving stopped, but the desire didn't. The desire didn't stop. I still would, you know, look at a cake or a donut and think, oh, I could really eat that. Even though the craving wasn't strong for it, I knew mm. I wasn't going to eat for it. But after it was around yesterday, two days ago, that I realized I now don't even have the desire for it. So the craving went in four weeks in, and now it, I'm about eight weeks in. I don't even have the desire for it anymore. And I think about it, and it makes me feel a bit no, no, what's nauseous it doesn't mm. make me it, like I look at sugar like drugs now whenever I see people pushing you know um, sugar out here we've got sweets where they push them along on the beach I see them as drug dealers now it's like everybody that's selling anything that's not meat is a drug dealer to me so yeah uh, I just see sugar as drugs now I don't see it as anything else but like cocaine food had the same effect on me than cocaine did you, you take it and then you have the come down and mm -hmm. I eat have to come down and I was continuously being thrown around this roller coaster of emotions because of the sugar but all of this time I was just taking cocaine all this yeah. time so it's um it's amazing to watch this progress but yeah no cravings and no desire well and I, I think that that's really key that you talk about um your perception because it is like an alternate reality whenever you're mentally ill um you see things through a different lens, you know, and it's nothing changed in your situation. You still have the same responsibilities. You still have the same husband. You still have the same child, but you are experiencing joy. And, and that's another reason why I, I titled my, my business inner clarity system, because it's about that inner clarity about seeing things differently from within. And we can sit here and go to all these gurus about, you know, even therapy of all these different modalities and, um, and different ways of meditation and breathing and everything. But if you are in an alternate reality, it, it doesn't work. You can't center yourself. You can't quiet your mind whenever there's absolute pure chaos and you're seeing everything through a different lens. No, it's not possible. Um, I always thought the issue was spiritual too. I was convinced that it was a spiritual issue. Um, I tried everything. I was, before I got married, I was going to spend around 3000 pounds on going on a shamanic journey to the four corners of the earth to try and heal myself, to do, you know, the ayahuasca plant and to purge myself of all of the, um, the things that are going on inside of me that, are, you know, drive me crazy and making me crazy. I was convinced it was spiritual. And all along to find out it was just a neurological issue. I'm so mad. I'm so fucking mad. Yeah. <laughs> it was all neurology. It was, I've, I've gone on this spiritual path, a whole decade of spirituality to find that it was a scientific thing. It was a biology thing. It's, it's, I don't want to swear on the podcast, but it's. That's okay. Cool. <laughs> no, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And what drives me nuts now is that there's still so many people who are needlessly suffering and they are drinking soda by the gallon and they are eating chips by the bag and they're eating cookies by the batch and they're eating ice cream by the carton and mm -hmm. they are just continuing their mental illness and I just I want to just run to them and go mm -hmm. well there's another way there's another mm -hmm. way um, but it's very difficult for them whenever they are in the middle of their mental illness to see, because they just think that I'm just another, another thing. They just think I'm another person just saying another thing. Um, but that's why I need your story. That's why, you know, we as a carnivore community need stories like this to know that the worst 
of the worst can get better <laughs> yeah. because I, I, I love you already. And I hate <laughs> to say something like that to you, but that borderline personality disorder is the worst of the worst. And so, yeah. and, and, and the most hopeless. So yeah. if you can resolve this by eating animal meat and animal fat, then it has got to give hope to other people. <laughs> it has yeah. got to. Yeah. Um, it's, go it's ahead. hard because when you, when you're showing something like this happening to someone, the, the rebuttal that you're always going to get is, well, it worked for her. It might not work for me. Mm -hmm. And um, people will do things in the meantime, like you mentioned, the eating the cookies and eating the sugar and the sweets and stuff, because it's a temporary feel good. They want to feel good temporarily. And you can't tell somebody that feels like crap all the time that they should stop the one doing the one thing. Yes. That makes feel good. It's like, well, no, if you, I don't know. You're going to take the little bit of happiness that I have away from me, the little bit of peace of mind that I get. But what I hope, what I want to be able to get across to people is, is to, you know, the cocaine analogy and the, the sugar analogy. If you was doing cocaine every day, you would be feeling exactly as the same as, as you feel now. And if you just take the drugs away, then you get you go through the withdrawal stage, of course, you feel weak, you feel tired, you feel groggy, you, you get worse before you get better, but yes. it's worth it. Because even with a husband, even with a child, even I live right on front of the ocean, my house is overlooking the ocean, I have so much to be grateful for. I've been in Mexico for almost three years and I've only been here for, six, for seven or eight weeks. I've lived here for almost three years, but I've only been here for eight weeks. I did not see my, what I had. I looked at my husband. I looked at my child. I looked at my house and I didn't appreciate any of it. And it's, I've only appreciated it in the last eight weeks. And they have stuck, well, my husband has stuck by me throughout this whole thing. But to, to know that other people have got lives that they could be appreciating and, and, and family that they could be loving and appreciating and experiences that they could be trying and opportunities that they could be taking hold of. And they're not because the drugs, it's all drugs. Everything that's not meat or meat based or animal protein based is drugs. And I know it sounds so left. It sounds so ridiculous and crazy, but it's something that everybody can try because there is nothing to lose. There is nothing to lose from just giving it a try. You're not going to die from high cholesterol or ha having a heart attack in 30 days. It's not going to happen. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, it's really hard to get people to stop the short-term pleasure for the long-term um, effects and benefits. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and that's what I do. I just encourage people just to try it, you know, like prove me wrong. Um, and I have so many people who once they do, and, um, and I tell them, I said, just do it for 30 days, just do it for 45 days. And they're like, okay, okay. But then I can go back and I'm like, then we'll, yeah, then we'll reassess and whatever they get to the 30 days. And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know how good, good feels. I never <laughs> want to go back. And I'm like, yay. I'm like, I won. Like I yeah. get, I get them to just try it because there's almost like this rebellious teenager inside of them, those yeah. cravings that are like, no, give me my, give me my tacos, give me my, my ice cream, give me my, this, give me my, that, give me my ramen noodles, you yeah. know? And so if you just tell that, that inner being that, that rebellious teenager, okay, listen, you can have it in 45 days. Yeah. Let's just do this experiment. Let's just mm -hmm. try. Let's just prove Emily wrong. You know, let's just do this. Um, but uh, I want to tell you, I haven't told anybody this. Um, well, I told I told my family, but I haven't talked about it publicly. Um, so I have had no um, bipolar symptoms since April of 2019. So that's three years. And um, I had an incident and it scared the crap out of me. Um, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, I've been trying to get my son to eat more meat. And so I came to this compromise with him because, you know, I'm, I'm not going to like just torture him and make him only eat meat. Um, just because I have a problem with it. Um, and so I gave him this compromise and I said, okay, you can have potatoes with your meat. And he was like that 
he was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so we went and we did this experiment where we tried three different ways to fry or, or bake um, French fries in beef tallow because I was like, okay, I'm obviously not going to use seed oils for my kid. You know, that's a no brainer. But, um, so we did three different ways to bake it or to pan fry it or to deep fry it in beef tallow. And so we were talking about the science of it and the crispiness of it. And so we did a taste test and I should have just had my 14 year old do the taste test, but I did the taste test with him because I was trying to prove to him that this, you know, the deep fried was, was the best way to get it. Um, uh, actually, no, I was trying to prove that it was baked was the way to go. And he was trying to prove that deep fried was. So, you know, I got a little arrogant and I was just like, I've been doing this for three years. I can, you know, have a handful. I had literally probably mm, 10, 10 French fries. Mm -hmm. And the next day I had depression and it wasn't just like, kind of like my boat was rocking a little bit. It was like three years ago, depression sure. and it floored me. And I was just like, I called my family and I was just like, I'm depressed. I'm depressed. Like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I had potatoes yesterday and, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. I went to bed and I, sl I slept probably an extra, like two hours that day. And then I was just like, okay, I have to go to work. I have to do my regular schedule and this will leave my system. And it did within 24 hours, I was fine. And of course I went back to eating my animal meat and my animal <laughs> fat and it went, okay, I can't do experiments, <laughs> Wow! but That's it's just crazy that, that even potato uh, fries did that to you. That's yeah. how sensitive you are. <laughs> and, and that I've been on this path for this long you know, for three years, you would think that I, you know, I could have a handful of fries. Yeah, because they speak about the, uh, the insulin sensitivity becoming better or something, but if you're sensitive and you suffer mental health issues, it's just not a gamble that can be made. It's no. not a gamble that can be played with. I've always, like, I haven't gone out of the diet and, but it's only been eight weeks, but I never will. I, I don't need to learn through experience anymore. I did that my whole life. I don't need to know if, I'm sensitive to other things. As long as I'm not going to die on a meat-based diet, I don't need to have anything outside of it. This, my marriage depends on it. Being a mother to my son depends on it. My whole, it, my whole life depends on me not ingesting anything that's going to mess with my sugar levels or is going to, you know, change the neurology of my, you know, my hormones in any way. I just can't do it. It's not worth it. Um, like when I go out with my partner and people are offering me stuff, it feels rude to say no, thank you. And then having to explain myself, well, like, I'm a carnival now. I can't do this. I feel crazy. But it's like, I'd rather look crazy, feel crazy and be crazy than to eat this little piece of cake for you. Somebody that, you know, I don't really, it's, it's not worth it. Why am I going to be depressed for three days for somebody that I don't even really, you know, so no, I'm not going to do it. It's just, you know, you found when you find like, what works, there's no need to try and fix it you don't fix what's not broken so it's um it's actually amazing to hear that because all I've been hearing is you go a certain amount of time and then you in introduce something and your insulin sensitivity is better but for someone like yourself that deals with mental health issues to hear that it's kind of a it helps somebody like me to know that yeah I should stay away from that and I can only imagine how many other people you're going to help uh, with bipolar disorder because of your experiences and it's just it's orgasmic. It's the what we're, the ability that we have to change people's lives now. It's just, it's not, it just gives me so much hope. Every time I see a comment, someone saying, you, you, you made me decide to go carnivore. It, it makes my heart sing. I, I, I dance around the house and I'm like, yay, another person is, has come to the other side. It's just, yeah, it's amazing, man. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you have such a powerful, powerful platform. I mean, you have such a powerful story in itself, but your ability, whenever I first heard you describe borderline personality disorder and your experience, I was like, what? Like she described it perfectly. Your eloquence and your ability to communicate what that misery is really like is so powerful. And I'm so glad. I actually, I had a client 
who sent me your video and said, you need to hear this and you need to talk to her, a client. Yeah. And, wow. and I was just like, I was, and, wow. and I mean, people send me stuff and I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 And it just happened to be, and I know it was just meant to be happened to be that I had a free moment right then. And as soon as I got the message, I was like, okay, I'll click on it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Sean Baker, whatever, you know, like <laughs> I was like, okay, another story. And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, I have to talk to her. I have to talk to her because, um, it is so important for people who are in the pit of mental illness hell to know that there is hope. Yeah, I I, can't, I couldn't imagine living with this for the rest of my life. And to know that there's people out there, men and women, although women and BPD is usually, you know, I yeah. don't really see a diagnosed with it, but there are some. Um, to know that the people are going to have to deal with this for the rest of their lives and there's not really any hope. They just have to learn how to manage it. Therapy can only do so much. Medication only works for a certain amount of time because the body gets used to it. And just like with drugs, you have to take more and more and more for it to have any kind of uh, beneficial effect. On top of that, you're no longer a person because the drugs just make you this zombified kind of human being. It's like to know that majority of people with BPD can be healed through a diet. At this point, I'm spamming BPD pages on Instagram. Girls that have taken the BPD identity and they're like, yes, this is me. I have BPD. I'm like, nope, Le leaving them a, a paragraph. Hey, you can fix this. Come over to my page. And sometimes I think, is this a bit narcissistic of me? Is this the grandiose manic phase that I'm going through? And it's not. It's just, I cannot sit back and watch other people suffer when I have found the answer and it I feel like a preacher like I'm you know given the gospel of carnivore and I'm an evangelist and I'm just out there handing out leaflets like hey please can you join carnivore just give it some time you don't have to commit forever just give it some time um it's just hard to watch people suffer both physically and mentally and not say anything and I've become the really annoying person in people's lives where they say, oh, I'm dealing with this. Or I've got this. I'm like, well, maybe you should go carnival. <laughs> Everything is fixed with carnival. I think anything that we fix with carnival, I'm convinced. Yeah. And, and let me encourage you to know that, that this is going to take its course and that you just need to be present at every moment of this journey because this is going to be a ride. And, and you are going to be used to bring life and healing and hope to people. Um, and you're going to, you're going to learn the boundaries that you need to have. Um, and that's really hard whenever we come from mental illness, because we don't come with boundaries with mental illness at all. We come with risky behavior. We come with pushing on the accelerator and hitting on the brakes. Those are the only two things we know is all in or nothing at all. And so yeah. I, I really, I, I'm excited to watch your journey. I'm excited to watch you, you know, really learn how to do that because I was, I was there. I was, as soon as, um, as this all happened to me and people found out about my story, they were messaging me from all over the world. And yeah. I would stay up until like two, three o'clock in the morning answering their questions because they were laying in bed and they couldn't even get up enough to go to the doctor. They couldn't even get up out of their bed to do anything, but they could message me and I was giving them hope. And then I realized, okay, yes, I can help people, but that's why I started my YouTube channel. And I'm so glad that you started your YouTube channel and you started your Instagram because that will give you a filter that will give you a, a, an opportunity for you to just go, okay, here's my boundary. Here's my boundary. I can't stay up, you know, till two or three o'clock in the morning. I need to sleep. Um, yeah. I will help you tomorrow. <laughs> I will, I will help you later, or here's a video. You know, I already answered this question. I can't type. I can't tell you how many questions I answered repeatedly <laughs> the same yeah. questions. Um, and, and that's why, honestly, it's, it's really important to make a video to just go, okay, here you go. Here's my story. Um, yeah. but I don't want you to ever let go of your light because your light is bright and it's getting brighter every day. And I'm so excited to see what happens with, with your experience as now you are alive. Yeah.
yeah Yeah. I've only just I've only just come to life I've been dead for so long um I was sifting through my old Instagram yesterday and even the girl that I thought was happy because I used to look at myself um when I was really really depressed I was here and I was depressed I used to go back to my Instagram and say look how happy you were and today and like yesterday I was going through I was like oh my god you thought this was happiness this dark drug overwhelmed taking drugs reckless behavior you thought this world that you was in this 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 unrealistic reality that you was living in was happiness I'm like no there's no way that that but I convinced myself that that was happiness once upon a time because that was all I knew I had the clouds constantly over me it was always over me but I thought okay at least I have my physical freedom you know, I was just looking at the things that I should be grateful for whilst going through the motions. And, you know, now that I'm at a point where I can help other people, I want to help other people. I have started the YouTube, I have started the Instagram because I've already, I've seen it happen already. I'm getting lots and lots and lots of questions and I'm not going to have at one point when it builds up, I'm not going to have the energy to be able to respond to everyone. So I'm making sure that I start the foundation right, which is something I've never been able to do. I've never been consistent with anything in my life. I've never built a foundation or any kind of stability for myself. I've always started building things on shaky ground. So then when it builds up to a certain point and I crumble, I have to start all over again. Whereas now I have my marriage, I have my child, I have my house, I have my work. I'm a musician. I have my, um, and now I have this. And I'm consistent, I'm staying consistent with it. Whereas before I would only be able to really do one thing and then I'll do it for a little bit and then I'd give up. That's another thing about BPD is not having any identity. I didn't have an identity. I didn't know who I was. So sometimes I'm like, ew, I'm married. I'm a wife, what? I woke up and I'm married. What? How did that happen? Because even my marriage story happened during a manic phase. And yeah. I'm glad that it worked yeah. out because he was my true love. But I got married in Vegas. I yeah. went to Vegas and got married after knowing someone for two months. Yeah, I tell my husband all the time, I said, <laughs> I wouldn't have married you if I wasn't bipolar. But I'm so glad it was the best decision I ever made to marry my husband. But I can look back at my mental illness and know that I would have never made that decision. I would have never made that decision. But yeah. I'm so grateful that I did, that the the that I was protected. Um, yeah. But um, and thank God for the men that can stand by these crazy women. (laughs) So, um, um, I just, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that you broke through to the other side, um, and that you are not suffering from the mental illness anymore. Um, and I know that the best is yet to come because Sade, I am not the person that I was two years ago. I am not the person that I was one year ago. Mm-hmm. it continues it just keeps getting better there's just more and more moments of healing that happen um I don't know if you know my story but I had a tragedy happen in my family a year after I had been carnivore and um if that had happened to me before carnivore it would have leveled me um mm-hmm. I really you know I I don't know if you've ever been suicidal but I think that if that had happened to me without carnivore, I really don't know if I would have recovered, um, but I did. And I wasn't just like, I kind of got through it. Like I sailed through it. Mm-hmm. Like I had this peace in the middle of the storm going, mm-hmm. oh, I see this happening and this happening and this happening, but I'm okay. Like I was okay and it resolved and everything's fine. Um, it took like an, a year, a year and nine months for it to resolve. Um, so it was torture for a long period of time, but I was okay because I kept eating animal meat and animal fat and it didn't occur to me once to kill myself. It didn't even, it didn't even register for me to take myself out of the, in, you know, be in the misery. Um, so I'm really excited to see how this is going to heal you even more and more and more that's the thing about mental illness is you know when something happens to you you, it doesn't it's not just like it happened happening to a normal person it's not just a normal kind of grief it's you know especially with something like BPD as well with BPD you can think about something and go through grief as if someone just died yeah I used to think about scenarios and I would cry I would feel like it had already happened because I was living in the experience as I was thinking about it and now I'm like well if 
I know it's not a good thing to think about, but these are the same thoughts I had when I was dealing with the BPD. But I'm like, okay, so now if this was to happen, I would actually feel, you know, quite, I, I'd still, I'd be able to deal with it. It wouldn't feel like I'm mourning a situation. I would know that I could get through it. I know that, you know, I'd be able to deal with it and not have the catastrophic thinking and be up and down and let it ruin my whole life. I now think about the cat, cat, um, catastrophic thoughts that I had before and they have no effect on me. So I get what you're saying because I thought about that. If a, a traumatic situation happens, now we have the tools to be able to deal with it. It's like 20 years of therapy in, in a few months or a few years. It's amazing. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just cons every day I'm more amazed at what this does. I'm hearing it, it helps to reverse Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, diabetes, arthritis, uh, multiple sclerosis multiple sclerosis uh, it's like when does the list stop every day i'm discovered like fibromyalgia i just found out two days ago that the whole bunch of people that are healing from um they're helping their symptoms of fibromyalgia when does it stop it's just it's a really beautiful thing and it's it's a very shocking thing because meat is the last thing that all of us ever thought was going to be the one the thing to heal us because we've always been told to stay away from it and i've always been a conspiracy theorist i always knew they were lying to us about stuff some stuff but I don't think it was everything I didn't think they were lying about absolutely everything so now to come to find out meat isn't the cause of heart disease and you know gonna make me drop dead it's just it's shocking it's beautiful and I'm happy to be a part of this secret society of carnivores <laughs> and get the word out <laughs> yeah and fat I think that fat is the most shocking thing because I have I even have people who are carnivore who come to me with mental illness and they're like, I've been carnivore, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, what do you eat? And they eat lean meat and they don't eat enough fat. And I'm like, increase your fat. They increase their fat. And within a week, they have joy. They have clarity of thought. They have everything. And I'm just like, it was the fat. It was the fat. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought <laughs> that's the one thing that they tell us, you know, eat low fat and you know, it's just, it's such a lie. You're absolutely right. Um, and also I think, I think about, um, the catastrophic thoughts and everything like, um, a maze where it's like, you know, you remember like, um, those haze that uh, not haze hedges. Um, that's like a maze. Like you walk through a garden and you just have these big, long, big, tall hedges and you can't see through, but you have to like make it through the maze. That's mm -hmm. how my life was that like, oh my gosh, I came up to a dead end. It's the worst thing in the whole world. Oh my gosh, this is horrible. Or, oh my goodness, I went a wrong turn and, and this is never going to end. I'm never going to get to the end of it. And now it's just like, oh, you can I, see. See <laughs> I see the maze and I can see that, uh, okay, this is not a big deal. I just need to turn mm -hmm. right. Oh, and then I, I see up ahead, I'm supposed to turn left. And then it's just like, I see, I see, I'm going to navigate my way through this. Like, it's not a yeah. big deal. And it's going to be okay. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. And I don't know whether it's the dopamine, the serotonin, whatever it is, everything is going to be okay. I've been listening to Bob Marley's everything's going to be all right a lot lately. Yes. Because I used to always listen to it for comfort. And now I can listen to it and resonate with it. Like, wow, everything is really going to be okay. Even if so-and-so dies, I'm going to be okay. Yes. Even I break a leg I'm gonna be okay even if something happens that's really really terrible I'm gonna be okay unless I die and then I'm still gonna be okay it's like everything's gonna be okay now and before everything was just gonna be turned to shit everything was just gonna be you know I'm gonna ruin my life and this is gonna ruin my life and this is gonna be really really bad or really really good and then yeah it's just it's, well and I remember um I had a, a friend that was BPD and she said um whenever she would meet somebody new and she would have a good connection with them. And she was just like, well, this is good for now, but they're going to stab me in the back. They're, yeah. they're going to betray me. They're going to hurt me because everyone hurts me. Everyone hurts me. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, oh, like that's that it, but there was no way. And, and then who, who really knows if that's like a self-fulfilling prophecy that yeah. the people do stab her in the back and do hurt her because she yeah. said that that's what's going to happen because she expects it mm -hmm. yeah that's the thing that's another thing that I had I had a issue with detachment I wasn't an attached type of person because I believed that everybody was going to leave um yes. I had some experiences in childhood where you know I was I was in Nigeria for a little bit and just 
some things that happen where I realize, okay, not everyone's going to be there all of the time for me. So I have to kind of be okay with being on my own. Yeah. So um, even with my husband, I haven't been able to attach to him until like the last couple of weeks because I said he could walk out the door and he could die in a car crash. So I'm not going to get myself attached. So then I have to mourn him when he dies. Very, very narcissistic and selfish kind of thoughts. But it was me deciding not to attach to him because he could die at any minute. Even with my son, I used to have think thoughts about, well, if he was to die, then, you know, I'd be sad. But I need to make sure that I don't attach myself to a point that it breaks me when he does die. Because yes. with BPD, it's not just, you know, the feeling of mourning. It's like we mourn every day of our lives. So then because I never actually lost anyone to death, in that way I couldn't imagine I couldn't fathom what would happen to me if I did lose someone to death because I'd already mourn I see people mourning for their loved ones and I'm like that's how I feel every fucking day yeah. I'm always mourning something for no reason so how am I gonna feel when that person actually dies on me and I can't get them back so I always had this issue of attachment whereas now it's like okay you're allowed to attach Sade and you are allowed to lose people and you can mourn them and everything is going to be okay you know, it all turns out okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I know. And people think we sound like we're crazy. They think mm-hmm. we sound like we're absolutely crazy, especially when they're in the mental, in the middle of that mental illness, or if they've never experienced mental illness, they're just like, how is that any different? You know, but we never knew what good felt like, you know, we never knew what peace was like. Um, mm-hmm man, it's such a gift, such a gift. Well, I think that you and I could probably talk for hours. Um, and I think that we're probably going to have more conversations. Um, I am so excited to have you in the carnivore community. Um, I am so excited to see all of the, I'm going to say it millions of people (laughs) that are going to be healed and helped and given hope because of your story. Um, I, I think the best is yet to come and I feel so honored to have met you and, um, I'm so glad that you're free. Thank you. I'm glad to have met you too. Thank you for having me on. I'm just, I'm so grateful for the person that, um, showed you my video. It's just like everything happens for a reason. So thank you. Um, really looking forward to talking to you again and, uh, continue with the good work, man. You're doing such an amazing thing. You're a therapist that has come out of the, the, you know, that career to help people because you know that it wasn't right, you know? So congratulations on finding your path as well. Congratulations on reversing your mental illness. Congratulations on everything that you are, you have become and are going to become. And just thank yeah. you for being you, man. Thank, thank you. you. So where can people find you? Where can people find you? I'm on YouTube as Carnivore BPD. So Borderline Personality Disorder, but shortened Carnivore BPD and Instagram, same Carnivore BPD and TikTok. I haven't figured out how to use yet, but it's Carnivore BPD underscore underscore. So everything is Carnivore BPD. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. All right. Well, um, we will continue this conversation because we're going to have many more. (laughs) Okay. Take care. Thanks, Shade.